I'm about to bring a whole new meaning to the phrase from farm to table this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. As I continue my search for the ultimate pine tree that you can make quickly, easily, and reproduce so you can have an entire forest on your table, I found myself eating some grapes with my daughter and after we had finished our bowl of grapes, my daughter had this left in her hand and said, Dad, that would make a really cool looking tree. And thus ended my journey for the ultimate pine tree. I'm going to show you how to make them in this video, as well as uh, I want to give a crack at like a deciduous tree. And look at that. That's one, actually two grape vines that I glued together. And look how stable that is. Totally awesome. I'm going to show you how to make this as well. Now, if you want to help support the channel, Really cool, head over to questgivers.com. You can also find a link on my website, tabletopwitchcraft.com, where you can pick up a copy of Mountain Mayhem. It's a really cool module that I wrote with my brother, Gareth from the DMG Info, and DM Scotty. And uh, pretty much think the Dirty Dozen, but like fantasy setting. That's how we like to describe it to everybody. Check that quest out, guaranteed you're gonna love it. As well as Firelight Fables Candle Company, all the scents you need for your tabletop gaming sessions. This one, how perfect is that? Whispering Woods. TWC10 at checkout gets you a 10% off discount and a small kickback comes to help fund the channel. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, we're kicking this video off with the Whispering Woods candle by Firelight Fables Candle Company. Perfect candle for this craft. And all we need to start are some grapevines that we've dehydrated. They take about 12 hours or so and they get really hard. And then we're going to grab our static rest applicator. And all we really need is some 7 millimeter static grass. And I believe I also got some 4 millimeter. Now look at this static grass applicator. The grass is literally shooting out of this like rockets. I love this static grass applicator. You can find this as well as everything else on my website under my Amazon links. And with a little bit of this War World Scenics layering spray, super sticky stuff. We're going to be able to apply the 7 millimeter static grass first. Now you don't want to overdo it. You just want enough to basically act like little branches coming off of the main trunk of this tree. What I do here is about two applications. I'll apply the 7 millimeter, reload it, uh, clean up super easy. You can see right here using some parchment paper. I'll spray the 7 millimeter static grass. Hit it up one more time, real light. Again, you can very easily overdo it here. Then I designate a brush that I can clean this thing out with. And then we'll swap over to our shorter, darker grass. That's going to be more like our pine needles for the tree. And with this, I do one decent coat. And that's it. Again, you're going to definitely overdo it if you apply this more than once. And I guess it really depends on how thick you want the tree to be. I live in Maine and in a lot of spaces up here, you see some really sparse trees. So what I want to do is take a brush and just wipe away some of the needles on the trunk of the tree and some of the branches. So you can see that trunk uh, when we're done. It just adds some detail to it and um, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. If you're enjoying this video and my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, and there you have it. I mean, this tree literally took maybe five minutes to make start to finish. Now, we want to make a deciduous tree. We don't want something so pointy, which a single grapevine uh, is perfect for. Just go to the store, and you'll see all different grapes. They have all different vines and, and I guess, shapes, really, that you can make whatever kind of tree you want. I literally had probably four or five different types of grapes um, that I used in this video. And these were the, I guess, shorter, bunchier vines. Gluing two of them together and applying some of this polyfiber in clumps is going to um, give you the canopy that you're looking for for this type of tree. Now, when you apply the clump foliage, you want to do this in pieces actually a little bit smaller than I'm showing here. Uh, the static grass uh, spray does a good job holding it on, but you know, you're gonna have to do this over the course of probably two days. You let that set. Then you can come back and do your highlights with some lighter clump foliage using some hot glue. All 
All right, now for me, the final touch and what made these look totally awesome, I'm probably gonna go back to all the other trees that I've made and add these, are these micro leaves by uh, Green Stuff World. Absolutely amazing, awesome level of detail to the tree. All right, just sprinkle that on there like you're in the kitchen cooking. A little uh, Emerald Lagasse, yell out bam if you want to. All right, now we're on to the base. Now, these trees are super easy to make and you can make them so quickly that I also wanted a way to make the bases quickly. So I have a new affiliate to the channel. It's Let's Resin. You'll find their link on my affiliates page on my website, www.tabletapwitchcraft.com. And all of my affiliates actually offer you a discount, so I advise you all to go check it out. Maybe there's something there that you like and also help the channel out at the same time. But we're going to use their product to make a silicone mold of these bases. And the nice thing about it is we're going to make it so that we can apply up to four trees on some of these. Now the area that I'm applying this sculptor mold to, this is where I really intend on having static grass. The bark that you see here, I also use that in my mountain video. I'll put a link up above. That's some great stuff, some really cool looking stone texture. Now I'm just plugging the bottom of these holes here because when we pour our silicone, I don't want it going all the way through. And this is gonna allow us and give us options for placing our trees on in just a few minutes. Now we got kind of a funky mold going on here. The reason for that is I don't wanna waste the silicone. So I'm making it as small as I possibly can using the foam perfectly fine when you're making a silicone mold. And um, yeah, you'll see what this looks like here in just a second. The glue, yeah, you wanna make sure to glue this down really well because there's gonna be some cavities underneath of this uh, because it's, you know, the bark and we don't wanna have that fill up. This is me just geeking out here, trying to get the exact amount of silicone I need. Obviously, this is gonna vary for you on your craft. But now we're gonna dip into this silicone rubber here from Let's Resin, loved it, set up awesome. I only had like one little bubble, that was my fault, but I really am excited to showcase this little tool right here by Let's Resin. It's this little paddle mixer. Oh my word, I was so impressed with this thing. Absolutely love it. Um, almost dumped everything right here. <laughs> so make sure you're hanging on to it. What a great job this thing did mixing up the silicone for this craft. And this silicone mixture, by the way, is by volume, so you can put it on a scale and weigh it out. And the higher you drop the silicone into the mold, the less bubbles you're gonna have, so keep that in mind. All right, now we're gonna spray the silicone mold with some surfactant. It's just gonna help keep the bubbles from adhering to the silicone and having bubbles in your cast when you're done. I'll put a link up above to my Hearst Arts molds where you can check out really how to work with this type of stuff if you wanna get into it. It's gonna speed up making your bases like crazy once you go through a little bit of the trouble of making this mold for yourself the first time. You see how easy these pop right out of the mold? All right, now if you wanna see how I paint the stone for this, I'll put a link up above to my alchemy shop. It's the exact technique that I used. I absolutely love the way this stone looks, especially after we add the grass to it. All right, now again, the nice thing about the way we did this is we have options for as many different trees as we want on this one base. This one we could fit up to four. And all I did was add a little hot glue. Don't even paint it. You're not gonna see it once we add the static grass. A little bit of layering spray. No matter where you put this stuff, it's so sticky, that's where you can have grass. So you can have little bits of grass on ledges of the rock or whatever. Uh, to really have some nice layers of detail. And one final thing I want to mention, when you put your hot glue in here to add your trees, you do have to work quick because the plaster works sort of as a heat sink and it will cure really quick. But once you get those in place, these are all set and ready for the gate table. Okay, super easy craft, right? I mean, it's literally gonna take you longer 
to eat those grapes and dehydrate the vines than it is to make these trees. Now I've got a really awesome collaboration coming out with a handful of cool YouTube channels you don't want to miss out that's coming out this month. So make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out, and please consider following me over on Patreon. It's funding there that really helps keep this channel alive and growing. Also, Mountain Mayhem, make sure to check that out. Fun little adventure, and until next time, I'll see you around.